Hey everyone, Miss Scarlet Tanager here with the long-awaited first question and answer video ever on the channel. So I've been meaning to do this first for, I think, 1300 subscribers? Or was it 12? One of the two! Anyway, we, I, rather, decided that instead of doing it for that, I would do it for 1500, mostly because I was really, really busy at the time, and since I'm going into winter break from school, just gives me more time to record, more time to collect questions, more time to answer those questions. So without further ado, questions and answers. So the first one is from Facebook, from Tony Wallace, or by Tony the Raptor, if you are part of my Twitch. He is one of my mods. What is one piece of advice that has always stuck with you? When it, at least when it comes to YouTube, the first piece of advice was one that I heard from Lord Minion 777 or Wade was, if I remember correctly, he said something like, fake it until you make it. Th that's a gross simplification of what he said, but in one of his vlog videos where he got a whole bunch of YouTubers together to talk about YouTube and how to get started, that piece of advice, kind of, don't, don't be self-deprecating and try to put yourself out there as if you've already become successful, it kind of really stuck with me. And from then on, I kind of just thought in terms of what can I do to help you guys out? What can I do to help the channel? What can I do to stand out from p other people without sacrificing who I am? Uh, I guess that kind of answers the question. Okay, next one. Scary Player Norway, or Normandy, asks, Do you have a pet? Your favorite game? Water level? Have you been in Europe? If so, where? I have never left the continental United States. I have only been to a handful of states to begin with, those being Oregon, Washington, California, Montana, Nevada, Texas, and Massachusetts. That's where Boston is, right? Wherever Pax East was. But, so that's only that many states out of, you know, all 50? I also do not have a pet. I used to have a dog named Eris. If you watch Fallout 4, I bring her up a lot because that's what I call dog meat. I grew up with Eris. I had a cat when I was fairly young, but she ran away, and don't really have one at the moment. I want one, I just can't really have one, it's not feasible, I can't really afford to take care of an animal right now. As for my favorite game, I thought that was obvious, it's Final Fantasy IX, it will always be Final Fantasy IX, and it always has been Final Fantasy IX. And about the water level, I like it. I'm gonna go out on a limb, I like the water temple from... <laughs> From Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I like it, it's one of my favorite temples, deal with it. Spoopy Cupcake asks, Are there any games you plan on playing that you're very excited for? Love you, less than three. If you love me less than three, why don't you love me greater than three? What if I want to be loved greater than three? As for the question, let's take a look here. I've got a list of games that I want to play. The one that I'm most excited for is... Probably Resident Evil Zero's HD, re not HD remake, HD remaster. I never actually played Resident Evil Zero, so once it comes out in January, it'll be a blind run through. Besides that, I would say I'm excited for Outlast 2, but I'm really not, because that means that I'm going to be terrified, and I don't like being terrified, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I know you guys want to see it, and I want to play it. That's the same thing for Alice in Road, which is supposed to come out next year as well. I'm going to be terrified, so it's not really what I'm looking for forward to. But as for the ones I'm looking most forward to, probably either Mirror's Edge Catalyst or Deus Ex. I don't want to put Final Fantasy 7 on that list because I'm honestly not really excited for it per se. More apprehensive about whether or not they're going to do it well. But we'll see. Dude Run asks, are you available for LP collabs and if so, what's the best way to get a hold of you for such things? Now I've gotten this question a couple times. And I'm going to say what I said to them. I don't do Let's Play collaborations unless I'm doing it with a friend or somebody that I know. In terms of the few collaborations you've seen me do, I'd known Necroscope for nearly two years before we ever collabed. I've met uh, Tesh and Mike, or Swingpoint, in person, and I've actually gone to hang out with them. They're really cool people. Um, Gur, I met through Tesh and them. I'm going to meet him at PAX South, but he seems like a really cool person, and I've known him for at least a couple months. So it really depends on if I know you personally in my personal life, whether or not I would let's play with you. 
For instance, to give you a very, very extreme example, if a famous YouTuber, if PewDiePie called me up tomorrow or something and went, Scarlet, I don't really know you, but do you want to Let's Play? I would turn him down, because I don't know him. I don't Let's Play or collaborate with anybody that I don't really know. So, sh that's the long answer. Short answer is, no, I'm not available for Let's Play collaborations, except with people that I know personally. Stares at you. What's your favorite non-PC game? Um... I already got asked that, Final Fantasy IX. Dude Run asks again! Do you watch any smaller YouTubers, and if so, who are they, and what do they do? I have watched a couple smaller YouTubers, uh, ones that are smaller than me at least. The s smallest that I watch on a regular basis would probably be Patrick Static. He... I have done one collaboration with him so far, and we've met in person. He's a really cool guy. I'll put his link in... Link in the description underneath the video thing. And you guys should all check him out because he does a whole bunch of Let's Plays of games just like I do, and he does a lot of collaborations with Wade. Anyone who is smaller than me? Um, probably LP Marshall 94 He's probably the only YouTuber that I watch who has less subscribers than I do. He doesn't upload too frequently, but I do like to watch his uh, Chronicles of Riddick Let's Play. Mostly because I'm just a huge Riddick fan, and I saw he was like playing that, so I went, Ooh, I gotta watch that! But I'll put his link in the description as well, you guys should check him out. Ironbite asks, Do you miss the vent? No, no I do not. Not really. Um, for those who don't know, by vent he means ventrilo. I used to be part of a ventrilo chat before I even started my YouTube channel, and that's where I got my first introduction to Dungeons and & Dragons, and Shadowrun, and other tabletop games. No, I don't really miss it. Uh, I play most of my tabletop stuff either in person or with friends that I know over Skype. So, no, not really. Another question from Dude Run. I'm getting a lot of questions from him, aren't I? Could you tell the audience a story about the guy who cried ball? Boy who cried balls. One day, there was this man. This boy, rather. He cried balls. So everybody came to see why he was crying balls. And they saw that there was no balls. So everybody just laughed him off and left. The next day, he cried balls. They came to see what he was talking about, and there were no balls. So on the third and fourth, fifth, sixth day, they kept coming, and there were no balls. Then on the ninth day, the boy cried balls, and they did not come. None of his townspeople, none of the family came as the boy kept crying, Balls! 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 And then, when the boy didn't come home from his supper, his parents would have to look for him. And all they found was a single red ball. Violet Dragon asks, what made you interested in doing YouTube? Interesting uh, story there, actually. I did maybe a, one or two videos before this happened, but I had, wasn't really doing Let's Plays. I wasn't really doing anything. I just got bored, so I made a video. What really got me into doing YouTube was charity. I can't remember how exactly I found out about this, but I found out about a stream done by 8 Red Coins. I don't know if they do very many streams anymore, but they did a full playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, start to finish without stopping. It was two people, and they were able to take nap breaks so they could finish the whole game in one sitting. They did the whole game, and they raised a whole bunch of money for charity. That day, during their stream, is when I sh started my first charity stream. Or started setting it up, rather, for a couple weeks after that. At the time, I was living on my uncle's floor. Not even a joke, I was living on his floor. I slept on the floor for over six months. But I was living on the floor at the time and was on my really, really crappy laptop. I didn't have the awesome setup I do now, but I wanted to do a charity stream anyway. I did one for, if I remember correctly, Doctors Without Borders. I think that was the first one. It was Final Fantasy IX start to finish in one sitting. I ended up having to take a break because it was just me who was playing, and I kind of passed out on webcam. But that's what got me interested in starting YouTube, was to do charity things. And then as it started to grow and as I started to do more and more and start to interact with other YouTubers and interact with people in the comments, it became a little bit something more. My ultimate goal is to be able to do it for a job, at least while I'm going through college, and to do more charity streams. I want to get it to where I'm doing a charity stream once a month, but at the moment I'm only able to pull it off once every other month or so, mostly because of school, 
trying to reopen my Etsy, trying to pay rent, etc, etc. But that's kind of what got me interested in doing YouTube, was the sheer breadth of things that you can do to help people. From charity streams, to things like the Project for Awesome, to all kinds of other stuff. Big Boss asks, where'd my name come from? It is a bird called a Scarlet Tanager. That is an actual type of bird. It's a songbird. I can't remember exactly where it's from, but it looks like this. And, well, that's what the male version looks like. The female version, if I remember correctly, looks a bit more like this. Anyway, the Scarlet Tanager was just something I picked. I was just trying to think of a username and just went, well, I'm a girl, so there's Miss. My name's Scarlet. Scarlet Tanagers look pretty. Boom, Miss Scarlet Tanager. Though, finding out that Scarlet Tanager is a actual term. When I was in middle school, we had this colossal dictionary in the library. It was one of those ones that had its own little stand so it could sit open and the thing was gigantic. One of the days I just went and flipped through and tried to find my name in it, I found over 30 definitions for Scarlet. Scarlet Fever, Scarlet Monkey, Scarlet Tanager. Scarlet Monkey is an actual thing too. And that's where I found out about Scarlet Tanager being a bird. I guess that's really where the name came from. I'm a birdie. I'm a birdie bird. I'm a burp. Dark Delta has a really long question, so I'm going to read it as quickly as possible. Congratulations, you finally earned it. Sorry I didn't subscribe until this year. I've been watching for a while, so congrats on everything. Ask Scarlet. One, your favorite voice actor of all time. Two, best cosplay you've ever completed. Dream cosplay. Most embarrassing thing you're willing to share. Dream vacation spot. Just curious and trying to give you some more questions. I'll go through those one at a time. First one, your favorite voice actor. Um, if I had to pick one... There's so many good voice actors. Um... Uh... Um, oh. if I had to pick one, it would be one of two voice actors, either Jennifer Hale or the voice actor who's done just all kinds of things, including, if I remember correctly, Femme Shep in Mass Effect, or Brandon Keener, who did Garrus Vicarian in the Mass Effect series, and he also did at least half of the male voiceovers in Fallout 4, at least of the, N like the minor NPC characters. Um, but really? I just don't really have a favorite favorite, unless you make me pick and then it would be one of those two. Because your voice acting is either really good or your voice actor is really, really bad. <laughs> but the second one, best cosplay I've ever completed, my dream cosplay. Hmm. Best cosplay I've ever completed would probably be Garnet. I am extremely proud of that costume, even though I do have to uh, let out the shoulder seams a little bit because it's a little uncomfortable here. It was my first time with stretch fabric. I dropped a water bottle. It was my first time with stretch fabric, and it was the first time that I'd ever done a skin suit, and it was my favorite character. And for those of you who have not seen it, this is my Garnet Crystal. In Final Fantasy IX, she wears it around her neck for most of the game, for all but maybe a couple scenes. But if you see it, the signature on the front of it is done by Hironobu Sakaguchi himself. I happen to be at the PAX where he came to visit one of his very, very, very few public appearances, especially in the U.S., and I walked up in my Garnet costume, and I didn't have any copies of Final Fantasy IX or anything else for him to sign because I had forgotten to bring them. So as I was walking over there, I took off my hood of my white mage gown, took off the necklace, and handed him my necklace to sign. He looked flabbergasted and was kind of humbling and a little hilarious. He didn't think I was going to ask him to sign part of my costume. But no, yeah. That signature is Hironobu Sakaguchi himself, so that's probably my favorite cosplay I've ever done. My dream cosplay, however, would probably be one that I could not wear to a convention very easily. One of the ones that I really, really, really want to do would be Eve from Parasite Eve, as in the big old mitochondrial creature. I would need animatronic arms, I would need stilts, I would need a handler, I would not be able to work for very long because I couldn't enter through doors properly, but I still want to do that costume. Most embarrassing thing I'm willing to share. If I was willing to share it. It wouldn't be embarrassing, now would it? Dream vacation spots? Um, my dream vacation spot would be anything historical. I've always wanted to go, as morbid as it sounds, I've always wanted to go on a tour of different areas of what was once Nazi Germany, go to the concentration camps, go to Auschwitz, go to Dachau. I actually have an ancestor, if I remember correctly, she's my great aunt, who was an escapee of Dachau during World War II. So I've always wanted to do that. I've wanted to go see Parthenon, I've wanted to go see all of the shrines in Japan, because they're all so cool. 
but anything that has historical significance, or things like Stonehenge, going along the English, the Irish, Irish countryside, or just places that have a lot of history or a lot of heritage behind them, especially if they're heritage that's, you know, my family shares. My family is part Irish, according to my mother, we're also part Native American, also German and Russian, and all these other things. And it's kind of fun to go see all that history. I'm also a history buff. Oh, NASA. I want to go visit NASA. Steeler Wayne asks, what has been your favorite Let's Play that you've done yourself? And B, what is your favorite Let's Play that you have watched? Ooh. Hmm. If I had to pick one Let's Play that I've done, it would probably be... Okay, I can't pick just... I can't pick just one. It would either be Mass Effect 3? I can't, I can't say all three of them because technically they're three separate Let's Plays, but Mass Effect 3 or Dragon Age Inquisition. Inquisition is one of my most popular Let's Plays that I've done on the channel. And it's also one of my new favorite games, because it's just so much fun. If I could do it over again, I would romance Solus instead of Sarah, because I prefer the romance, now having done playthroughs of both of them. Now my playthrough that if I that I will import into the next game, if there is one, will probably be the one romancing Solus, just because I want to see if they do anything with that in the next game, if there is one. Um, as for my favorite Let's Play that I have ever watched, again, I'm not honestly not sure. It would probably be some of Necroscope's charity runs, or Necroscope's multiplayer or multi-voice-over multi, multi -voiceover runs of the Resident Evil games, when he did the no-save-state run of Resident Evil 1, or 2, or the parts of 3 that he's done. Because you could hear him, and Minx, and Kiko, and a whole bunch of other people just shooting the shit the entire time. And to this day, I still sometimes go back and rewatch those, because it's hilarious watching all of them collaborate on just pulling apart these horrendously voice-acted games. Even though they're really fun games, they're still a lot of fun to make fun of. Display name asks, Hey Scarlet, on a scale of 1 to Vladimir Putin, what is your favorite number of the alphabets? What? Um... Nine. My favorite number of the alphabet is 9 squared plus B squared X2 light squared. In all seriousness though, congrats on 1,500 subscribers and my question for you is, if you could do a video collaboration with anyone in the world, who would it be? I think there's a theme with these questions. We're got, I'm getting a lot about other people. Well, whether or not I would let's play with other people. As for who I would collaborate with, probably be... Okay, if I was to pick one YouTuber that I have not collaborated with already, so I can't pick Necro, I would probably collaborate with Jacksepticeye. Mostly because I've met him in person, and I met him at PAX Prime, and he was a lot of fun to just hang out with and talk to. I remember sitting in the Polaris Lounge with my harp, because I had brought Clara, my harp, with me to the convention, and I was just messing around with it. Nobody could hear my playing because it was so loud on the floor, so I was just messing around with the harp. Jack and Mark come in, and Jack sees him and goes, oh, something like, oh my god, is that a harp? And comes over and, start, and starts asking if he can mess with the harp. And I say, yeah, just be careful with it. And I told him it's an Irish folk harp, which it is. And he got this goofy grin on his face. But I had just then discovered who he was. I'm still new to his channel. I just think he's a really cool guy and would be a lot of fun to hang out with and play games with. So if I had to pick one, it would probably be him. Master Koyas, congrats, Scarlet. And my question, and a question would have to be, what super badass cosplay do you want to do in the future? Well, besides Eve, mitochondrial Eve, which I've already brought up, I would probably do Morrigan from Dragon Age Inquisition, specifically her ball gown. I already have the silk for it. I just need to make all the underpinnings because with the way I am with my cosplay, it has to be absolutely perfect before I'll wear it. So I'm going to be making a hoop skirt, I'm going to be making a bum roll, if you don't know what that is, google it, with a safe search on, some panniers, which are, or panniers, however you pronounce that, which are kind of like mini hoop skirts that are just on the side of your hips, a back bustle, and then a petticoat on top of the whole thing, and then the skirts, and a corset, and then another corset on top of the other corset because she has the fashion corset on top, which... It's gonna be very complicated and very hard to do, but if I had to pick one, it would probably be that. Emperor Corndog asks, Congrats on the subs, Scarlet. Here's a simple question for the Q&A. What are your top five movies? I'm curious to see if your taste in film reflects your taste in video games. Should... That should be interesting. Cheese! I don't know. I don't know. Um... I can give you my f some of my favorite movies, but they won't be in any particular order because picking just one is too hard. Obviously, Alien. The original Alien movie. That one is my favorite out of the whole trilogy, or quadrality, because 
because there's Technic and four of them. But Alien is probably one of my favorites, if not the favorite. Uh, Lord of the Rings. I'm not going to pick a specific one, but just Lord of the Rings in general. However, if you did make me pick one, I'd probably pick Fellowship, because I just love the beginnings of it and just meeting all of the characters. I'm going to cheat and say Pride and Prejudice. Yes, I know it's a movie, but I'm not talking about the movie. Pride and Prejudice, as in the original BBC miniseries. Yes, it's cheating. Deal with it. I don't watch a lot of movies. That's true, I don't. I very, very, very rarely go to the movies. Um, as for a fourth one, Mad Max Fury Road. I had a lot of fun going to see that in theaters. It was just so much fun to watch, so much fun to just take in the movie and everything that was happening on screen, and Furiosa is just awesome. If I remember correctly, she was played by Charlize Theron, but she just did so well in that role, and it was so much fun to watch with all the explosions and the booms and the booms and the booms and the booms. Um, as for a fifth one, yes, again, I'm looking over at my list. And by list, I mean all of my movies over there. And by all of my movies, I mean like ten. Pitch Black, which is the first in the Chronicles of Riddick series, of which there are three now. It would either be that one, or it would be Gladiator. And the reason that Gladiator might beat out Pitch Black, despite how much I love it, is because of the fact that Gladiator was one of my father's favorite movies. And for those who don't know, my father died from cancer when I was 16 years old. One of those two would probably be the fifth one, so we'll just put them in there and both in there and say top six. Just because I love Pitch Black and I love Chronicles of Riddick, and I love the new one, Riddick, as well, but uh, Gladiator also has that familial element to it. It was something that I watched with my father, and it was something that I honestly really like it. I really like the movie, and the ending of it still kind of makes me tear up to this day, so those ones would probably be it. Josh Thomas Moore asks, Hey Scarlet, two questions. Which of the accents or impressions can you do as your favorite? And two, who would you do Resident Evil who would you do Resident Evil playthrough with if you do any more in the future? I'll answer the second one before the first one. Um, Necro. I've already done Resident Evil 5 with him. If I was to do Resident Evil 6 or do the DLCs of 5, I would probably ask him first. Mostly because I had such a fun time Let's Playing with him in general. But if you made me choose somebody else who wasn't Necro, I would probably want to do one with, you know, I would probably want to do one with Kiko. Kikoskia. He would be the f um, second other person that would come to mind, mostly because of most of the other Let's Players I know. Resident Evil really isn't their thing. At least not on their particular channels. So, one of those two would probably be the ones that I would most likely want to do more Resident Evil Let's Plays with. As for the first part of the question, which of the accents or impressions can you do as your favorite? Well, I rather like my British accent, personally, even though I'm pretty sure that quite a few of my British le Let's Player friends, or my people in the comments below, will make fun of me for it, because it is a little posh compared to most accents that I've heard coming out of the British Isles. As for character impersonations, probably I either my Garnet, my Yuna, or my uh, Aerith. And as for examples of those ones, <clears throat> someday I may be queen, but I will always be myself. And Yuna, my father, I, I loved him, so I, I will live with my sorrow. I will live my own life. I will defeat sorrow in his place. I will stand my ground and be strong. I don't know when it will be, but someday, I will conquer it, and I will do without false hope. And Aerith, you came, even though you're about to break, hmm? That's a good sign. So, why did you come? Now, those three voices are fairly similar. The first one does have the accent, the British accent with it, but they're all very soft-spoken. If you want to hear one that's kind of angry, here's my Tifa. Stop running! I know. Even if you find the kids, you might not be able to help them. Maybe something will happen that can never unhappen. And that scares you, doesn't it? Well, you need to think about now. Really take it in. Look at you, you think you've got it so damn hard. Though I know which one you guys like. Where are you going, Leon? Leon, help! Nicholas Tisdell asks, Question, what are your top five animes? I used to watch anime a lot more than I do now. I honestly have not watched an anime in quite some time. But if I was to pick some, this one I do know what my number one is. My number one is definitely Full Metal Alchemist. I grew up with it, and when I say Full Metal Alchemist, I mean the original anime. I honestly prefer the original anime to Brotherhood, Partially because I prefer Al's original voice actor, 
and also because I read the manga and I watched the anime when I was a kid and I like to keep them separate from each other because their stories diverge so much. So Brotherhood for me is the manga, and the anime is the original anime. But that would be my number one. As for the rest of them, in no particular order, you would have Noin, which is something that I watched when I was a uh, early teenager on Toonami, if I remember correctly. It was either Toonami or Adult Swim, I can't remember which. But it's a very, very, very good anime. I've been meaning to get back to it because I've never actually watched it in its entirety, but it is still one of my favorites. Then you would have Strawberry Panic, which is a shoujo eye, meaning girl love. It is not a Yuri because Yuri means or hentai, which I am not into, but Strawberry Panic is the only anime I've ever seen, or if I remember correctly, not a single guy shows up the entire run of the anime. Because it takes place entirely at an all-girls school, and all of the teachers are girls, and all the administration are girls, and all of the students are girls. But most of the interactions happen between the students anyway, you almost never see the teachers. That would probably be one of my favorites as well. As for a fourth one, Inuyasha. Inuyasha was one of my first animes that I ever watched when I was a kid. Now, Ranma would be a close second because Ranma was technically first. I remember watching Ranma before I watched Inuyasha, but Inuyasha was the one that stuck with me. I've always wanted to do a Kagome costume, but I would need to find somebody to do Inuyasha with me, just because I think it would be hilarious. But as for a fifth one, that's where it gets hard, because again, I do not watch a lot of anime. And none of this even includes my favorite manga, because my favorite manga was never made into an anime. That manga is Mars. Um, You know what? Ranma. I'm, I'm just gonna choose two Rumuko Takahashi animes. Ranma. Ranma and Inuyasha. They're both on that list, so. Fomal Alchemist, Noin, Strawberry Panic, Inuyasha, and Ranma one half. Now as a close sixth, we're probably be Kurosuji. <laughs> I speak Japanese. I shouldn't have this much trouble pronouncing it. Kuro Kuroshi Kuroshitsuji. Kuroshitsuji, or in America, Black Butler. I cosplay as CL. I haven't managed to wear the costume in a while because I haven't gone to an anime convention in a while. But I do cosplay CL, and I did like to watch some of the episodes with it. I watched it with my girlfriend. My actual girlfriend. I have dated women and men. My girlfriend a couple years back. And yeah, they, she cosplayed Sebastian. I cosplayed CL. But it was fun times. <laughs> Valdo Adamant asks, how do you see yourselves in a couple years from now? Congrats, Scarlet from Peru. Oh, hi, Peru. I didn't realize a lot of people outside the US and the UK actually watch my channel. Hi. <laughs> Um, where do I see myself in a couple years? Hopefully graduated from college. Most likely, hopefully, fingers crossed, with a double major degree in both biology and computer science. Maybe grad school? Possibly. I'm very interested in nanotechnology. That is, if I decide not to go the video game route and do video game design and things like that as well. It just depends on where I am. Hopefully with a successful channel that I don't have to go back to working in retail for because I can make a living off of it. But that would be where I hope to see myself in a couple of years. No idea if that's going to happen. We won't know until we get there. And that was the last question it looks like because my little slideshow is over with. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you again for all of your guys' support. We have reached 1,500 subscribers and we are already about 45 subs away from 1,600, which is terrifying. To me, at least. Terrifying in a good way. Not in a bad way. In a good way. Good. Good. This is all good. This is good. You're good. I'm good. We're all good. But my name is Miss Scarlet Tanager, and I will see you guys in another vlog, in another video. And if you like this one, remember to leave a like and a comment. Share it out with the world so they can see me making a fool of myself in front of camera. And I will see you all in the next video.